Alright. Hello and welcome, folks, to a playthrough of Total War Troy. I apologize for the Anno series. Uh, unfortunately, my game files kind of got corrupted, so I reinstalled that game. Uh, however, I was not able to rescue that save. Um, so we're starting a new game. came out in, uh, in August. I've done a playthrough already of it, and I thought I'd share my second playthrough. So, um, we can get into what Total War is, uh, as a game here in a second, um, but we're gonna read through this right here, just so we can understand how we're playing this. So, Hector of Troy is who we're playing as. Old Priam, king of Troy, seeks to determine which of his sons is worthy to inherit the throne in his place. Hector and Paris must therefore prove themselves before their father, whoever gains the most favor, will instantly become master of the city. The Asuan League. Troy cannot face enemies alone. It is therefore up to Hector, Hector to gather a host of allies in defense of his father's kingdom. The more land controlled by his allies, the more formidable Hector's cause will become. A couple objectives here. Our first one is going to be delete, uh, not delete, defeat this enemy faction called the Maki Macaria uh, and the Macarians. And uh, that's probably where we'll go now. But first, a brief explanation of what Total War Troy is. So as you can see... If you're familiar with your geography, you can see that this is a giant map of the Aegean Sea. Um, so over here is Tro is <laughs> I'm sorry is Greece, ancient Greece. Um, so down over here is going to be where Sparta is in Laconia. Uh, Athens is going to be over here in Athenia. Um, you know various islands, Skyros, all those other stuff. Uh, kind of fill the Aegean Sea. Some of these have populations on them, like where these uh, houses and castles are, um, and some of them are unpopulated, like these islands here, where there's nothing really on them. Further south, we can see the island of Crete, currently owned by the Minoans, and another faction that I think will get pretty quickly destroyed by Sparta, if I remember correctly. Uh, and then over here on the right side is Turkey. Um, so this is where, or modern day Turkey, Asia Minor, uh, this is where some other factions end up playing from uh, Hippolyta's um, Amazons uh, in Lys Ly Lycia, Lycia over here is uh, Sarpedon, uh, so-called Son of Zeus. Uh, the town of Marathon, I think, is right here. Uh, you know, Thermopylae is probably somewhere up here. For, or, hmm, I think it's somewhere up here, maybe in this area. I think is where Thermopylae is. Anyways, so this game is set uh, in ancient Greece, way before uh, the era of uh, the Peloponnesian, Peloponnesian Wars, uh, before Sparta and Athens were uh, really the bigger powers. Um, islands like Ithaca, home of Odysseus, um, Sparta, King Menelaus, uh, Agamemnon of Mycenae, and uh, Achilles of Pythia uh, were the big Greek powers. And what this game kind of follows is the story of the Iliad and the Odyssey. So those Greek uh, and Grecian heroes uh, and their armies trying to fight back uh, against the Trojans over here on the uh, north e northwest side of Turkey. Uh, we have taken Helen of Troy, or Helen, the uh, wife of King Menelaus, and uh, that's Paris of Troy. That's the brother that we're kind of competing against um, throughout this campaign. Um, so the Greeks are eventually going to come over, declare war, and try and invade all this stuff. Here's the city of Troy itself, uh, you know, far bigger than some of these other small set settlements. And even if we click on it, um, which we can get into this stuff in a second. But that's kind of the overall overall storyline, is uh, we're, we're in ancient Greece times, era of the Iliad and Odyssey, and we are playing as the Trojans. So... Throughout the campaign, throughout the map, there are these towns. These towns have different resources indicated by the markers that are just over here to the side of it. So this one is a wheat. This one over here is a log. Bronze, more wheat. Uh, there's a gold one right there. Uh, more logs. Anyways, there's a lot of different resource production areas that are specialized. And up here in the top left, you can see our current pool of those resources. And then below that is how much we're gaining per turn. Uh, of those specific resources. And those resources are used to upgrade buildings, uh, recruit armies, uh, make trade deals, and all that stuff. Speaking of buildings, we start off with these two towns. Um, one is Zelia, and the other one is Antandros. Ant Antandros. 
Um, so since uh, Antandros is a food settlement, food is really good in the early game to support armies. So we're going to start building some more wheat farms there. In our main city, we're going to look to see what kind of lines we can get with our soldiers. It's looking like we want to upgrade to chariots eventually and probably get some archer ranges as well. And we do get guards of Troy and champions of Troy from this. Uh, either way, we're going to go ahead and start off next turn when we get more wood coming in and building some mud bricks. However, to wrap up this turn, our first thing we're going to do is fight against this army right here of the Macarias, like that quest said. So looking at their uh, their group here, they have some kind of general over here. We don't know exactly who he is. A couple spearmen, some slingers, and then some unknown members of his army. With our army, we got some spear units, some light swordsmen, and some light archers. I think we could probably go ahead and take this guy on, and uh, and let's get started with this first battle as it stands. And just look at that. So the balance of power shows approximately who would win in what fights. It does look like our a, a settlement garrison is coming over to help us. So we'll get reinforcements. So we have double their army. We could auto-resolve this, which our hero predicts a decisive victory up there in the center of the screen. Predicted casualties for ourselves and then the enemy casualties. We can run away down here at the bottom. Uh, which gives us another chance to fight him again, and then we can fight the battle manually. Since this one should be a pretty clean sweep, we're going to go ahead and fight it manually, just so I can show you uh, kind of some overall play styles that Hector likes to have uh, with his sort of armies. I think Total War did a good thing uh, in, uh, with this game, uh, especially for giving each character its own play style. So I, I did my first playthrough as Odysseus. Uh, he is very reliant on flanking and breaking morale and having troops run away because their commander died um similar play style to uh sarpedon however sarpedon uh, of lycia has uh huge chariot armies that he can pull out achilles is really good at one-on-one -on -one combat uh so he can kind of you know just <laughs> he can do a lot of damage by himself for pythia uh so i haven't i haven't looked too hard into a lot of them i kind of know just like the baseline playthrough style uh, of the majority of these armies. So here's our army here. We're going to move them, everyone over here to this side. Just so we can show everyone off. So here we got our bowmen. These are just some basic uh, archer units. So they have a range. If we hover over them, you can see that range kind of extends out in that conical shape highlighted there. Next to them, we have a couple units of Trojan warriors. These are some uh, two-handed club infantry. Uh, so they are good at fighting uh, <laughs> the general like blocking force. Um, so generally, how you set up your armies is you like to have some kind of spear unit in the front. So we're going to have these militia bands uh, right here in the front line. And these guys are going to be a blocking force. So the enemy is going to come up and try to get through them to get to our archers, our general, um, stuff like that. We're going to try and flank around them, though, with some different uh, sort of units. So swordsmen are generally good um, in terms of being a blocking force as well. Uh, they like to fight on the front lines. They don't really have too much of a flanking chance. However, these Trojan warriors, these guys do have a charge bonus over here on the right side uh, for the Trojan warriors. And you can see with that, uh, they can come in on the flanks and and do a lot more damage as if they were fighting fighting on the front line. So there's a couple different types of units, a couple different purposes for units. We're going to go ahead and start the battle because we're going to get these reinforcements in. And we will uh, adjust our formation from there. So once all these reinforcements come in, two archer units. Ooh, another one. We're going to bind all those on key number four. We're going to have our main blocking force be key number one. We're going to have our main flank force be key number two. Add this guy to key number one. And these skirmishers can go on with our flanking force. And we'll have both generals on key number three. With that in mind, we're going to come forward with our blocking force. We're going to put our flanking force over here in the tree line. We're going to put our archers behind our blocking force and our generals in between our archers and our blocking force. All right. Now, I don't see any of the enemy yet. When they come into vision, generally they'll show up uh, on the map here somewhere. Uh, however, I'm guessing they're probably over here on this side of the map since we don't see them. Oh, we just saw one. A group of slingers, so we are headed in the right direction here. 
we really want our the rest of our army to get up here before we go pressing up too far. Actually, gonna pull our flanking force over here into these woods. Nice. All right. So these swords do have a charge bonus. They're necessarily the best, though, as our clubmen do have almost double, uh, over double their their charge bonus there. And these guards of Troy are, are heavier units, so they have, you know. Looking at the the militia band here on the left and the guards of Troy on the right, you can see uh, pretty clearly that you know there's different tiers. You know there's guys with just a, a small little dinky shield and and not really any armor to these guys with big old tower shields and heavy spears and all that kind of stuff. So, all right, looking forward at the enemy line. Doesn't look like they're walking up too too quickly. Looks like we might have to be the engagers here. Here you can see some slinger units. They are, you know, David Goliath style slingers. Here are some uh, moderately armored. I'd say they're they're medium grade swordsmen. And then they're here over there. We're gonna wait for the rest of our army to come in uh, before we go walking up too close. Our guys in our tree line are now actually hidden, so they will stay hidden as long as they stay in that tree line, which we want to have happen. All right, so we're going to walk up here, bring up our archers, our heroes, our front line, and have our flanking guys move through the trees over here. And because they're in trees, if you look just above here of our units, you can see that they're hidden, which means that the enemy cannot see it. So uh, the enemy probably has a lot of their units in the tree line there. We can only see the ones that are on the extremities uh, for right now. And here's their hero. This is a Cotes. A Cotes. Got some kind of war pick. Cool looking dude. He looks ready for battle. And our Hector of Troy moving out with the troops. There he is. Man, he's taller than everyone else. Holy cow. Hector, Hector is a tall dude. Tall, tall dude. I'll yes pull them out in the sun. So here's our minor character from the settlement. Like a, another lightly armored, kind of like a Kota's there. And then we have Hector here. Look at that gold tip spear. We're in the gold armor, ready to win the day. All right. Since we're in a good spot, we're going to pull our archers forward and start doing some skirmishing with them. We're going to make sure all these guys in the tree line are keeping their fire still since we do have a range unit with them. And... They should be within range of our archers since we have the high ground up here. But we're also in range of their slingers. Yep. So the arrows go out down the hill towards the slingers. And the slingers are shooting their rocks back up towards our archers. It looks like we've already taken some kind of casualty. Ooh, man. Here comes their big army coming up the hill. A couple bodies scatter from the arrow fire. We're going to have Hector and our backup here go 1v1 over there. Alright, we're going to pull our archers back behind our front line here. Some of our front line blocking units are taking some hits now. Alright, and there's the front line blocking action happening. So we're going to start swinging around. To get some flanks going on on their main force there. Swords fighting swords. So we're going to pull this militia unit down and just chase after that. We're going to have our big champions come up this way. We're going to enable these guys to start firing. We're going to push one of these guys out here. And we're going to take both these guys and start chasing after their range units so they can't fire. The foe has your units. And look at that, we're already breaking the morale. Troops tend not to like when they're getting flanked uh, <laughs> by other forces. 
So generally when they start getting flanked like this, their, their morale is going to start to shake. They're going to start to retreat almost immediately. And it looks like our Hector and our secondary hero there were able to 1v2 uh, their main hero. So we're going to send them both after these range units. Range units are kind of pesky because they will always like to run away from a fight. And uh, there's the victory call there. We routed enough of them. Uh, enough of them lost morale. That main flank, well, there are some of our own bodies here. Some of the archers took some hits. Uh, some of these militia guys died. As you can see, the majority of the field is is uh, full of the enemy's, uh, the enemy's bodies there. Our whole force is chasing them down the hill now. They're all trying to run away. Some archer fire is still coming in. Maybe some javelins. Uh, but for the most part, we're going to call it there. So we're going to end the battle. A decisive victory. You're victorious. victorious. <laughs> the corpses of the enemy littered the ground with those able to still fully do so with the laughter of our gods ringing in their ears. We're going to end the battle. Here's a little overview screen so we can see. Hector lost 30 men while the enemy deployed roughly about the same as Hector. And they lost nearly 200, I think, is what I saw. Quick little animation. Some of these are really graphic. Yeah, so they lost almost 250 and their hero died. So we gained some food from it, some experience for Hector. Now we can either sell these guys as barter to gain even more food bonus from it. We can kill them all, kill our captives, which would give our army some bonus morale for the next couple turns, or we can take them on, which would replenish um, our losses that we took during that battle. So we're going to do that. I always prefer to take people on. All right. So now we're in their territory. We're going to check out the garrison there. Slingers, Light Swordmans. And I think we could take it as it stands. We're going to come back. Let's recruit Militia Warband, Swordsmen. My path is clear. Let's recruit two Swordsmen and some Light Skirmishers. We also got a level up for Hector here. So this unlocks the Vanquish ability, which gives us bonus charge and bonus speed or we can get the divine focus which gives us bonus weapon damage and weapon or armor piercing we go for vanquish ability all right so hector's recruiting troops we've upgraded a building uh we need more wood till next turn let's go ahead and open up our tech trees so these are royal decrees with these we can increase the production of our city uh decrease costs of our cities throughout the uh the world here decrease recruitment costs Decrease building costs, all that kind of stuff. We're going to go ahead and, and upgrade our royal timber so we get bonus wood uh, throughout the days. Let's go ahead and open up our diplomacy charts here so you can see we are really good friends with the city of Troy, Papa. Let's go ahead and sign a... Let's stay out of the military uh, alliance for right now. Sure Thardnia, we're pretty good allies once again. Paris of Troy, I'm sure I'm we're sure good we're allies. Menthmia... Uh, we're pretty good allies. I don't necessarily want to uh, make any sort of non-aggression packs with them because uh, very quickly I would like to take them over. These GN right, places, we've already got non-aggression packs with Teria. They don't like us enough. Sparta, they don't like us. My senior, I don't think they're going to... Oh, they do. Let's get a non-aggression pack with Agamemnon. Achilles in Pythia wants a non-aggression pack. Let's see if Odysseus, Odysseus does want a non-aggression pack. So sweet, we've already made non-aggression packs with three out of the four of the Greeks. Down here, our southern ally in Lycia. Uh, we probably want long term to get uh, better friends with him. Hippolyta's Amazons. Let's go ahead and get a non-aggression pack with them as well. And these guys up here, let's do it. Now we have a good base. Um, we're not going to get drawn into too many wars, uh, I hope, uh, but going forward we should be, should be pretty good. Alright, and we can get a lot more food from that stuff. Alright, sweet, let's go ahead and end the turn. So, Total War is based on off of turn systems. Uh, we start every turn as the player, and the computer is going to go. So they're going to move troops around. At, uh, anything that's in our vision, we're going to see happen, uh, and we can speed that process up. Um, so we got an issue. 
uh, or an objective here to issue a royal decree. A decree. We just uh, started initiating that process uh, when we wanted to upgrade that wood production. We're going to come down here and we're going to upgrade mud brick houses. This is going to give us more growth per turn. It's going to make our cities uh, grow a little bigger. And from there, we're going to be doing pretty good. Let's go ahead and start taking over this city. Couple slingers, some young spears, and militia, some swordsmen, uh, and then a minor hero against our uh, medium swordsmen. We have a heavy spear infantry, some light spears, uh, a unit of bows, and then a unit of skirmishers. So we can fight this battle like we just did. And this balance of power bar is so big in our favor. I kind of just want to auto resolve it. We can also retreat, or we can encircle. And when we encircle, we can see that they have certain turns until our garrisons start taking damage from starving uh and then ultimately this the city will surrender if we keep it encircled keep it under siege long enough like i said we're just gonna auto resolve this one uh actually let me see the uh the map here now nah, we're gonna fight this one should go pretty quickly <laughs> should go pretty quickly i hope we have better tier units, so they have a, a lot of light units, while we have some medium units in our uh, army here. Alright. This city is a little rinky-dink over here. I thought this thing was on the coast, but I guess not. Oh, yeah. Um, I think coming from over here would be good. So archers on keypad number four, main blocking force on keypad number one, spears on keypad number two for flanking, better flanks is going to be on keypad number three, and our hero on keypad number five. So one, swordsman over there, we'll have these guys over here, and then our hero right there. Okay. And they're sallying out, it looks like, so we want to get into position as quick as possible. And the main swordsman flanks are still in hiding, so they have not been discovered yet. I'm going to pull Hector up, too. So, let's put archers here. Main blocking force there, main flanking force, and the trees over there. Hector right there. Alright, so they just seem to be like floating around this hill. It's a very good hill, honestly. I don't know what the AI is doing here. I'm not a fan of it, though. We're going to wait for our right flank to kind of get better in position. Before we go walking up. Too crazily we like. And now, because we leveled up Hector last time, we get this Vanquish ability, which... Uh, gives him some more damage and gives the allies around him some more damage. Alright, so you can see their slingers are just coming out, and our guys are enraged, so they're going to start taking some damage from those slingers. We have our archers up there as well. Our archers have less of a range than their slingers, so as unfortunate as that is, I think we make up for it in damage. I think archers do more damage or they do armor piercing damage whereas slingers kind of don't a couple arrows made the the landing there we're taking Your some hero. slinger fire back attack. Ooh, i think we just lost someone there all right let's go ahead and push this flanking force up over there and it looks like our archers are just Doing a lot of damage here to their slingers. There's one of their slinger units. Taking a bit of a break. They're running away from the action as it seems. We can start to see his sort of front line. His spear unit starting to come out over here.
All right, let's go ahead and bring our front line up nice and close. Bring up this flank, pull up Hector as well. Engage those swordsmen with our clubmen. Keep walking up our main force here. Turn those javelin men back around on the slingers here. Have Hector go 1v1 there, hero. Alright. Bring our front line up. Getting some front line action here. Pull up this flank to wrap around. Our archers are still trying to pick off as many slingers as they can see. That militia unit of theirs is starting to get flanked now. Let's go ahead and run these, uh, these guys straight through the center here. Have each one of these sword guys just go chase after theirs. Victory is close enough to taste. Nice. More and more of them are running away. Hector's out here 1v1ing the, the uh, enemy hero. Let's go ahead and inspire our big boy guards of Troy. And there's the victory. Decisive victory once again. Alright, so we lost 55 guys, they took a bit more losses, however the garrison ultimately surrendered the town. <laughs> Yikes, that's going to leave a mark in the morning. Alright, got some more food, and now we have some options here to what do we want to do with this town. We can raise it and just totally, uh, ultimately destroy it, we can sack it, get a bunch of resources and let them keep control of it. We can loot and occupy, which will destroy all the buildings in it, and then we get all the resources from it. Or we can just occupy, which will keep all the buildings in place so we don't have to prepare to do it. We're going to just occupy it because I'd, re I'd like to uh, get another food settlement here. Our food income will go up uh, pretty substantially from this. The more we uh, get upgrades in and the more we get different buildings in. Alright, at the end of this turn, I'm thinking we get some more uh, Trojan Warbands and another Skirmisher unit. So we're going to once again build up our army here a little bit. And I think we're ready to go into the next turn. So that enemy faction still owns both of these towns down here. And that's where we're heading uh, after that. So, build up our army just a little bit. And then we'll head down there and finish these guys off over the next couple of turns. It's kind of the, the main goal. Alright. Another objective completed. Some other objectives to construct any buildings, upgrade uh, any buildings. We're going to upgrade our food settlement here. And then on top of that, uh, we don't have enough wood. So <laughs> that's all we're going to do. All right. Uh, I'm feeling pretty confident in this army. I'd like to get a couple more spear units. Uh, let's get some more like militia warband just to act as a front line. Go through this turn, speed it up. Construct any building. Alright. At the start of this turn, we can get some more food income going by upgrading that building. Uh, with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at our divine wills here. So what this is, is uh, some of the Greek uh, and Trojan gods at the time uh, were kind of all shared throughout the region. Uh, with that being said, we can start to pray... Uh, and that'll cost food and gold, or we can do a hectatomb, so a sacrifice, uh, and that will uh, give us certain bonuses. So the more we level up each of these gods, the more bonuses we can get. Uh, let's look at Aphrodite. So if we do a prayer to Aphrodite up there in the right side uh, of this pop-up menu, you can see that we get 20 growth faction-wide and 2 happiness faction-wide. This ritual will cost 20 gold and 400 wood. 
if we level it up, which praying will help uh, increase the relation, but also mainly doing the uh, hectatums or hecatomb uh, is what increases your, uh, your relationship. So once we get 50 relation with uh, a god, we get plus dip 10 to diplomatic relations with all factions and 200% to uh, organized games commandments. Uh, level 2, we get uh, bonus growth to uh, the faction, uh, bonus happiness to the faction, uh, and 10% more battle captives taken. Uh, and then we get invisible guardians, so we can start recruiting satyrs. We gain redis uh, damage resistance for our heroes, uh, and then we gain uh, better chances against enemy spies. Poseidon, god of the sea. A lot of his stuff has to do with the sea. Athena uh, tends to do more with uh, spear units as well as kind of like recruiting, just general uh, uh, fighting stuff. Apollo uh, has to do with mm, agent actions, so secondary hero kind of stuff like that. Ares, more of a god of war kind of thing. Um, you know, increases your looting and raiding and, and happiness from wars. Zeus, you know, the, the all-father. Uh, so you can get different sorts of diplomatic bonuses, different sorts. He's kind of like a well-rounded, different sorts of bonuses to attack. And same thing with Hera. Uh, bonuses to attack, uh, less construction costs, all that kind of stuff. For right now, because we want to grow our faction to the most and as quick as possible, we're going to do the prayer to Aphrodite. And then we're going to hectatomb that as well, so that we get the bonus 10 to diplomatic relations and 200% to organize games. Since we have captured all three of these cities in this province, we can actually issue uh, a commandment. Um, and what that is is just kind of a providence thing. So organized games, we get plus 6 and plus 30 growth to the, the region once we organize that. So next turn, uh, we should get a lot more growth uh, from this the, our starting little settlement town area here. With that in mind, let's go ahead and look at some of our other things. So the Asuan League is um, the more uh, military alliances we have, uh, the the more bonuses we get. So we get plus morale when defending. Uh, we can get bonus campaign movement, uh, plus more morale, minus recruitment costs, minus upkeep costs, all that kind of stuff. So this helps our economy uh, and our campaigns, our generals more uh, when we get more allies. And then Pyrrhus Air, uh, anytime we do things, uh, we can increase the relationship with our father, who will eventually give us the city of Troy. Some of these things are over here. So, plus 10 uh, per turn. Each turn we produce over 400 food. Uh, plus 10 for each providence, starting with 20 or more uh, happiness. Plus 2 if we share a common enemy with our brother. Minus 30 if I declare war on my brother. All this kind of stuff um, will generate... Uh, you know, bonus uh, things. Plus five favor with Apollo also will help uh, do all that kind of stuff. So my brother's benevolence is five, and then mine is 14. And like I said, the more we level it up, once we get to the very top of this, we get to the Air Troy, and we actually get to colonize our brother, essentially. All right. With that in mind, I think there's something that we can cheese here. If I remember correctly, I think they want bronze, so if we give them bronze and take a lot of their gold, maybe like 80, maybe, can we get 90? Can we get 85? Can we get 89? We can get 89. So let's give uh, 500 bronze for 89 gold. And then I think if we give 100 gold back... gain like a ton of relation I think I'm not sure if we can cheese it like that yeah so 16 that's the proof of generosity plus one per 50 units of gifts gold given to Troy okay I don't know th there's there's a, a whole many of things as long as we beat Paris there then we're gonna be fine because if we lose that battle to Paris our brother then uh, then we don't get to play the campaign's over. All right, so we're sailing across the seas now with our uh, Hector and his army, hoping to land over here and kind of work our way across that little island chain there. All right. Altar of Hera in our main city is what they want to do. All right. Let's go ahead and land. So we upgraded that. Let's go ahead and upgrade 
our other farming village there. And uh, minus four influence, minus seventy growth, minus one happiness. Uh, let's go marble square there. All right, Hector's landed here. Next turn we'll get more movement and range to do stuff with him. People are unhappy in this uh, province. Fortunately, their happiness is going up. All right, we're gonna keep it going though. Looks like they want to come out and fight. A couple low tier swordsman units, a couple low tier slinger units. Uh, overall, I think we would win. The Cadmian victory, um, <laughs> because it happened, hasn't happened yet. Um, basically, it's the same thing as a Fyrick victory. So if you don't know, uh, in ancient Rome, uh, there was a time when, before Rome owned all of Greece and all the world, essentially. Uh, and uh, the Spartans were at war with uh, ancient Rome, and there's a general named uh, Fierus or something like that. And he won a bunch of battles against Rome, but any time he did it, he won it, like, with only 51% of his guys still alive. So he could have lost the battle at any time. Uh, but eventually, he just, like, won so many battles that, like, his whole army was just basically dead. Even though he won every battle, he, like, lost the war. And that's considered a Fyrick victory. So, since all this stuff happened before Fyrick victories, normally when it says uh, a hero predicts a whatever victory, a Cadmian victory is kind of the same thing as a Fyrick victory. We're like, you're going to win the battle, but it's going to cost you a lot to do an auto-resolve. And I think... Um, let me look at the terrain. Uh, I kind of don't want to fight it, just because, like, so much of it is kind of unplayable in our little area. I feel like we just kind of get screwed with, like, a bunch of low lands in there on top of a hill or something like that. So we're just going to auto-resolve it, take the W, it's going to cost us, uh, probably a lot of our troops. Yeah, so we lost a good number of our spear units there. Some HP on some of our swordsmen. Uh, however, we did not lose our big boy units and our big bowmen. They lost a lot of their uh, their lower tier units, and a lot of them that lived are still on half HP. So we can actually replenish replenish the units that we did lose with that. And then taking this town is going to be that much easier next turn, solely because you know half of their soldiers are already gone, uh, and we can go from there however we want to. All right, let's go ahead and press the attack. And we'll auto-resolve that now because it's a decisive victory since we killed a lot of their army. Replenished our forces with theirs. Ooh. Oh! Oh, Jesus! Hector! My man! You didn't have to do that to him. Oh, jeez. Alright, anyways, so some food, some gold, some experience for Hector. And we will go ahead and occupy this city because we just want to get more resources. This is a bronze settlement here. So all the buildings that we can build, uh, we'll, we will want to focus on bronze as our production source. Alright, easy W there. Let's go ahead and recruit three more militia warbands. Let's go ahead and level up Hector. So with this, he gets more ammunition for missile units, more re missile resistance of all units in his army, and some bonus hit points. And with this, grants fatigue reduction to all units. Hmm. Ten percent reload. Armor piercing, transitional fatigue reduction, always begin battle with fresh. Ah. Let's go ahead and do formation specialist, because I think getting the 15% armor piercing damage of missile units in the hero's army is going to be good. Since the Trojans don't really have slingers, they have more bowmen and javelin men than anything, which is all armor piercing stuff. Alright. So... The more favor we have with Apollo, the better. And as you can see, favor decays 10 points per turn. Uh, so it'll be a hot minute before we can do that. And I think we had a quest for the gods. Altar of Hera in the next seven turns. If we cancel this, how long would it take? Two turns. turns okay let's go ahead and upgrade that and upgrade that and we will come back to that next turn a non-aggression pact with the eli elion embrazos let's do it and we get some bonus wood because they want to bribe us to do it 
which is always fun. Always more resources is always better. All right, so like I said, our cult level will deteriorate deteriorate over time uh, because we stop worshiping this lord or, or this god or whatever. And because of that, we want to get recruit some more. Uh, because of that, we want to get a temple to our god. That way we can kind of sustain our sort of uh, religion. Non-aggression pack with them. I actually plan on taking these guys over in the next turn. Uh, so we are not going to do that. No no sort of friendly pack with them. Who are these guys? Medan. And our timber production came in. That little royal decree. Reach Trojan Alliance 2 with friends of Elios. Alright. Let's go ahead and get our stone production going next. Upgrade our main town there. We're going to turn to get that temple quest done. Who are these guys? Medon. Who do you work for? Medon, Medon. Who was that? What faction are you? I have not encountered Kaim yet. Um, so I'm not at war with them. But, nonetheless, makes me nervous. So we wanted to get friends of Ilios. Alright, so let's start making some better friends, I guess. Here's oh, Troy, man. Military Alliance. Troy, Military oh, Alliance. Dardania, My Military Alliance. Uh, Lycia, Military Slave. Alliance. Carrions. I'm open to negotiate. Oh, aggression pack, sure. Lava. Nah, they don't like me. Alright, some aliens, Chesarones, Carrier, yeah, we're killing these dudes. God's willing, we may let. And the Kaim. I'm indifferent to. Indifferent to those guys. So. Really, they're considered. Aliens. Okay. I am happy. All right. So now we got some military alliances going. So now if we actually go to our diplomacy page here, we can see that we are in military alliance with Lycia, Troy, Dardania, and Paris of Troy, so our brother. With that in mind, uh, we kind of want to finish conquering off this island here and then go west and north from there. But now, because we're in Military Alliance, we can see so much of our friend stuff and what they're doing. So we're going to fast forward through it, because I don't really care at this point in the game. Who's doing what else? Alright, Peria wants to do a barter agreement. They want 57 bronze per turn for 71 wood per turn. We're going to take that deal. I probably overpaid quite a bit. All right, so over here, now we can upgrade that. We're holding off on upgrading Defend that, but we're going I'm over through I'm here. A little bit of trespass, but who cares? All right, and here we are. We are looking to siege this hand. settlement up next. All right. Turns we'll have more favor with them. I think we want to hack him to Apollo, and we'll give a prayer to Apollo too. And I think that should give us more points with Dad. Yeah. All right. Cool beans. And they want to come out and fight us. Close victory. 
Garrison's a little harmed. The garrison actually has better troops than the dude's army. I think we can auto resolve it. We still have a good balance of power there. I think we're gonna lose some of our basic militia, but as long as we keep our uh, Trojan guards and our heavier bowmen alive, then we're good. Oh yeah, our Trojan our guards of Troy got 100 kills. Our archers got 200 kills. They went up to unit rank four, so they got some a lot of experience under their belts already. So we're gonna go ahead and take these guys on, just because we kind of want to steamroll. Here, a single barter, 850 food. Oh, they want 850 food for me. Um, I don't know if I want that, if I want to give you 850 food. So, military access for these guys for 68 gold. Uh, sure, I'll take your gold. All right. Since the garrison's basically dead, this is a free town. We're going to go ahead and occupy it. And we have destroyed that faction. And now we get a decent amount of stone income as well. With that, let's go ahead and, and recruit some harpies. Get our army going. We want to actually upgrade to that ability there. So that we get that armor piercing that we talked about not too long ago. And then we want to go after Methma. Yeah. All right. Can recruit any agents yet? None. Cool. Then we go on to the next turn. Military access with Lycia, of course. Priam wants bronze. They want bronze. Let's go ahead and counter offer. If you give me gold, that I can give back to you for relation points, and then sure you can have some bronze, man, of course. <laughs> and we got a spy now, heck yeah. All right, we're gonna upgrade him, upgrade that movement sh uh, speed. Upgrade that ability to incapacitate people. And now we have a spy to use. We're actually going to bring him up here to the north. This is who we're going to be attacking next. Is this town of Skepis? Skepsis? I don't exactly know what else they control. Pintrestia is over here, I think. But either way. Declare war. And we got Paris to try on our side. Hell yeah. Alright. Do I think I could... Uh, take this guy. Yeah, I think I could. Oh, uh, it's gonna be a costly fight, but we'll win it. And we're taking out the garrison too. I think that's exactly what I want to have happen. Ah! No! Hector! Oh, yeah, baby! Nice little gut stab there. So we lost some um, warriors, we lost some militia, but the garrison has been, for the most part, killed off. Same thing with the surrounding armies. We're going to take these guys on, replenish our forces, and then go in for the kill here. A decisive victory against these guys. Oh, Hector! Okay, dude, Hector is scaring me, man. It almost looked like he's losing a lot of these battles. Didn't lose a single unit on our side. Great. Occupy this city now. And with that, and their faction falls to our control, we can now issue organized games on the table. Okay. Let's go ahead and upgrade a port city here, and yeah, all right. Nice starting, sp nice starting spot, nice starting point uh, to begin this playthrough from uh, as Hector. 
looking at Paris, he has not done anything. He's just recruited some Trojan nobles, and he's only level two. Aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh. we're level five. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, uh, looking at some other stuff that we can upgrade. Drill experts, the plus one rank to recruited units. We're actually going to get that, because we will be recruiting a lot, because these militia warbands are not going to last forever uh, in our army, so... We need to uh, we need to be ready to move on from these guys. All right. Well, with that, I think we're going. Ooh, hang on. We can. Uh... Oh, dude, we're so far ahead of this guy. Okay, we actually want to give some gold to Troy. Let me give you guys a hundred gold. Oh shoot, that was the wrong side. That's what they have. I want to give you a hundred gold pieces. And our divine stuff is going great. Let's go ahead and give a prayer to Aphrodite. And the turn. Your ally declares war. Paris of Troy declared war on Sparta. This early, huh? And we're up against Mycenae and Pelos. Let's go ahead and enter war on the side of our ally. They want me to give them 250 stone. Hell no, dude. Let's get a counter offer here. Okay. If you're giving me, if I'm giving you that much stone, I would like 600 wood. Can you make that work? You want food as well. Nah, that's a bad deal. Nothing's happening from that. These guys have ended their non-aggression pack. Good, because I'm about to go to war with them. Huh. God's love has withered away. I'm sorry, Apollo. Okay. We'd like to destroy that harpy settlement there. Let's go ahead and upgrade the hat. Now we can get a temple to Hera, wasn't it, that we needed? Plus five growth to the province. I'd rather get the temple of... Uh, I think I only have one turn for it anyway, so we're probably going to get a temple of Aphrodite. Okay, but now we can actually upgrade this and get better units unlocked. Cool! Uh, but there's some some work that needs to get done. So we want to trade up for a lot of wood and stone eventually. Upgrade that. Here we probably want to go with the winemaker so we can recruit more spies. And we get premiums residents too. Man, there's just a lot of buildings that I want to explore. Alright, with that in mind, guys, we're going to go ahead and end the episode here. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope to see you guys next time. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff down below. And I will see you guys there. Adios.